This is the Hyundai i10. It's a souped up micro city car that proves beyond all doubt size really doesn't matter. Trust me, when we get into this review, you'll see what I'm talking about. It was introduced back in 2007 and it's now in its third generation. So it's proved beyond all doubt. It's a very, very popular car. Back in 2023, it had a mild facelift and that's what we're here to have a look at today. Let's get around the i10, let's have a look at it, see what the engine and gearbox configurations are, the trim levels, and above all, let's get it out on the road and give it a road test and see what we think of the new or the latest Hyundai i10. You're watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel, and if you've never ever seen what we do before, then feast your eyes for the next minute and a half on our little trailer, and I'll get back to you straight afterwards with a review. This is how a car should sound. Listen to this. I didn't really push it either. I was just having a bit of fun. So here we are, the Morgan Roadster, where we're here for the Swiss Watch Show. And guys, guess what? It's another morning here, out in the sunny France. The Hyundai i10 is a smart looking compact little car. However, it gets its extra attitude by going for the top of the range trim level, which is the N line. There are three different trim levels. Your entry level car is called the Advance and that starts at around 16,000 UK pounds. Middle of the range is called the Premium and that goes from 17 and a half grand. Top of the range cars like the N line will cost from 19,000 UK pounds. There are nine different colors to choose from. If you like green, that's actually included. I'm not a great lover of green myself, but it's included in the price if you go for it. However, any of the other colors, if you choose any of those, they're between three and 600 pounds extra. Entry level cars come with rear parking sensors and a rear facing camera to help with parking. There's full privacy glass around at the back and at the front, you'll get auto halogen headlights with LED running lights. Mirrors are the foldy any type that heat up in the winter and you'll also get a decent set of 15 inch rims. Let's check out under the bonnet of the i10 and see what the engine and gearbox configurations are. Bonnet release catch, just down here in the driver's foot well, nice and easy, you can't miss that. Don't forget, if you're driving a left-hand drive version of this, it's gonna be in the passenger foot well, because they're not gonna swap it around, are they? It's too much money. Um, the actual catch itself is just here to the right of the logo. Put your finger in there and slide it to the left, and then you can lift the little bonnet up there. There's no gas struts or anything, it's too small, doesn't need it, guys. Um, let's pull the strut down, make it safe. It's over there on the left-hand side. Okay, so three different engine choices, and that will depend on what trim level you go for, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. So your first engine choice is a one litre three cylinder engine that develops around about 64 brake horsepower. It's not gonna light up any fireworks, let's put it that way. Nought to 60 times is around about 15 seconds, but nevertheless, it's a little city car. At the end of the day, it's not here to don't go drag racing in. If you want that with an auto gearbox, unfortunately it's not available. You can only get a five speed manual gearbox with that entry level one litre engine. Um, you're going to have to jump up to the 1.2 litre engine, which also jumps up to 84 brake horsepower, and that will give you a 0 to 60 time around 12 seconds, which isn't too bad. But then you get the choice out of the automatic or the manual. Now, if you go for the auto in that, it's a lot slower. It's going to be around about 17 and a half seconds, 0 to 60. Um, it's just the way it's set up, unfortunately. Personally, 
this is the best. It's definitely, it's the N-Line and it comes with a unique one litre, three cylinder, turbo powered, 100 brake horsepower engine. Now this will give you 0 to 60 times of around about 10 seconds with a top speed, dare I say, of 115 miles an hour. I don't know if I'd actually want to go 115 miles an hour in this car, but you do get the choice of the manual or the auto gearbox with this as well. So on paper, I suppose the N-Line is probably looking the better choice. Let's check out around at the back of the i10, especially this particular one. The N-Line gets a couple of extra sporty bits and pieces, namely the little twin exhaust and the uh, aero down at the bottom there, which I uh, can't really figure out why you'd want that, but it's very aesthetically pleasing, I think, is the way I want to describe that. You've got a nice spoiler on the top here as well, but once again, that does have a purpose. It helps with the, uh, with the wind deflection, keeps the muck off the back here, but even if you do get a bit on there, with all of the trim levels, you get a wash wipe at the back here. There's a brake light built into your spoiler at the top there. I like the look of this car. It's quite chunky, it's quite mean, quite sporty from the back. Um, you get LED clusters either side as well. So to be honest with you, I think it's quite good looking. Um, there's no electronically assisted lift with this car, uh, tail lift. What were you expecting? Come on, seriously, it's only a tiny little boot. It's got more than enough gas struts here to lift that up. Inside here, it's not a bad boot size, actually. 252 litres in there. You're going to easily get a couple of carry-on suitcases or one large carry-on suitcase and a small one. Um, I can also vouch for the fact you can get a set of golf clubs in here because I used this the other day to go to the local golf club. You do have to take your longer clubs out, your drivers and your woods and stuff because they are slightly too long. However, the rest of them will just pop straight in there quite nice and neatly. Um, your parcel shelf, don't really know what is the use in this because it's just, I mean, it's not even hiding anything under there. But but again, it's aesthetically pleasing. We like that. Pop it out like that, nice and easy. I'll put it over there. It can actually pop in here if you want it to. So if you're out and about and you need to put the seats down, you can put it in the back there. Um, so it will, will disappear inside the car rather than having to leave it at home or in the garage somewhere. Um, underneath here, I will lift this up for you. There is space to put a spare wheel. You can actually get a um, space saver wheel in here. It is an extra. I suggest when you go down to do a test drive in one of these cars, ask all about that with your Hyundai salesperson. They'll explain it to you. In this particular car, unfortunately, they've given us the pump and the liquid latex. Never works, complete waste of money. Throw it away, get yourself a space saver. Much more what what you need trust me i've used hundreds of them they do not do not work right so we said 252 liters in boot space in the back however when the seats go down if you just clip those seats like that one there and one there, 60 40 split guys pop that down there like that it's not completely flat that is the only thing you've got quite a drop here as well and then there's a lip to the seats however it's over a thousand liters of boot space in there if there's only two of you going out for the day and you've got a couple of dogs or you've got some bikes to put in the back there take the front wheel off the bike you'll get at least two bikes in there there you go so at the end of the day the i10 is not only family practical it's versatile here we are in the back for the passengers in the i10 and first up I am shocked. This is really, really comfortable and there's plenty of room in here. Tons and tons of headroom. Enough knee room. This is in my normal driving position. I wouldn't say it's excessive, but there is enough in here. I mean, really, this car's going to be used more for, you know, baby seats and young children, I would have thought. Um, however, you're going to get a couple of adults in here and possibly a third adult in the middle here at a push with a lift home from the pub or somewhere. Um, you've got the ice fix points in here. I love the way Hyundai do this. They don't put those horrible plastic things that fold backwards and forwards or poppy outy bits. It's just a little zip there that you unzip and then you can access the points. They're clearly marked on the seat as well with the Isofix points there. Um, recessed seat belts, lovely. Um, there's a, a little 12 volt, well it's not, a, it's a USB adapter there for the back. It's just in the front in the middle there, so that's quite easy to access. Very low transmission tunnel as well, so sliding across, you know, moving the kids about or having to do bits and pieces dead simple in here. There's no central armrest that pops down and there is no ski hatch, but there again, this is quite an economy micro compact, you know, city car. So I wasn't expecting all those extra bits that you normally get on GTs and saloons. One thing you do get though, are these nice headrests, which once again, when you're in position here, it's quite nice to put your head back because it's, it's got quite a nice rake on this seat. The upholstery is finished really nicely. And I think just generally all around, I'm very impressed in the back of the i10. Up front, the i10 is spacious, comfortable, and very nicely finished. You'll get an eight inch TFT touchscreen that houses a DAB radio with Bluetooth connectivity. There's a really nice digital cluster with built-in trip computer, 
digital speedo and rev meter. Entry level cars also get a multi-function leather steering wheel that incorporates the cruise control, lane keepy, speed limiter and the lane follow buttons. And finally, all cars come with a digital air climate control system. So here we are out on the road in the Hyundai i10 and first up, seriously guys, this is a cracking little car, both out on the open road like we are now and in the town, in the city. Um, it's just so versatile, but also so comfortable. I love these seats, it's really nice. Great driving per position. Um, peripheral vision all around, absolutely superb. You've got tons of glass in here. It's brilliant out the back window as well. Got quite a big rear screen on it, which not only makes it good for when you're driving, but at the same time, when you're parking this car. It's a, it's a tiny little car, it's very easy to park anyway, but having all the glass around in that large screen, absolutely perfect. Um, driving the car, well, brakes, superb. Got to mention the gearbox. Got to talk about this gear. It's a short throw gearbox. Um, it's, uh, I tested the i30, that's the Hyundai i30, and I mentioned how good the gearbox was then. Um, you can watch that video, by the way, if you click up there now, it's going to pop up there. I'm going to put it up for you. Um, also, did the same thing on the i20 as well. Phenomenal little gearbox, and I'm so pleased to see that Hyundai have put the same gearbox in the i10. It's a sporty little short throw gearbox, but if you're into driving manual cars, you're gonna love this. It just makes this car like a little hot hatch rather than some little poodle around, you know, city car. Um, and it really does feel like that with the gearbox. There is a, an auto gearbox available, we mentioned that earlier, but personally, if I was choosing one of these cars, I'd go for the N-Line, which I'm driving today, um, with the, the manual gearbox. Um, it's just a whole heap of fun to drive around in. Um, great second car, absolutely brilliant. Um, brilliant, stunning first car because it's very, very cheap on insurance, this car. It's one of the lowest groups of insurance that you can get. So if you combine the two there, so if you're a parent thinking, my, you know, my child is about to come up to age of driving or learning to drive, um, this could almost be the absolute perfect first car to get your hands on as a second car and at the same time for, you know, one of your offspring who, who are about to learn to drive because one it's quite sporty and good fun and at the same time it's got a bit of street cred two it's reasonably economical i'm currently getting 42.6 let me go to the long term um i'll scroll across there you've got a little scroll button here on the way yeah 42.6 as an average um hyundai say this car should be getting up to around about 53 54. i can easily see that on a run don't forget journalist i'm not driving this as frugally as probably you will if you're actually owning one of these cars you know we're, we're hammering it about pushing it road testing it um, we're not going to get the best economy out of the car so do bear that in mind but i would say this is going to get late 40s early 50s easy and that's pretty much what hyundai say this car should do love the digital uh, cluster here the cockpit here absolutely brilliant it's a new thing it's part of the make makeover it's really really nice um, it's just a, a lovely subtle way of showing your speed um, it, you can use your buttons here to scroll around it's got all your onboard computer and stuff on it one little niggly thing which i will mention you can put a speed warning on this um, great if you're learning to drive or if you are very not aware of where you are in a certain area but i've had to turn it off because every time i go just slightly over it's very sensitive um, even in the 30 go 32 33 beep, 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 it just oh drives me mad so i've switched it off um, love the screen up here tft central screen not massive does the job touch screen very easy to get to you haven't got to lean forward or anything and very basic and easy to use um, generally driving guys this car this car is absolutely brilliant i think it puts smiles on my face all the time i've had a lot of fun over the last week um, it's versatile it's practical can't say much more can you um one thing i will say the warranty on this car again superb hyundai have gone the extra mile with that um, and when i mean the extra mile you get five years unlimited miles unlimited mileage five years warranty um, you've got a 12-year anti-perforation for all your rusty bits you've got five year paint plan that's also gone above and beyond and you'll get one year roadside assistance when you buy one of these cars all in all, I don't think you can go far wrong. Get down, give one a test drive, any of the extra packs or any of the warranty bits and pieces you need to know. Just have a chat with your Hyundai salesperson and I'm sure they will sort all that out for you. But all I can say is from my personal point of view, what a great little car. Love driving the uh, Hyundai i10. 
So there you have it guys, the Hyundai i10. What a car, what a cracking car. I have had so much fun over the last week that we've been road testing this car. It's, it's just so family friendly, it's versatile, economical, but at the end of the day, it puts a smile on my face, especially that little three, three cylinder turbo powered engine under there. It really growls and you know, sometimes the wheels spin at the front, you can have a little bit of fun with this car. But I think that's what makes the i10 so popular because it ticks boxes for so many different genres, so many different angles. You've got your mums, your grannies, you've got your younger people and people like me. We won't put me into a category, we'll leave that for this week. But at the end of the day, I think you need to get down and give one of these a test drive. It's a cracking car, definitely worth having a little go in and making your opinion of what you think of the Hyundai i10. Been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. Don't forget, like, subscribe and comment. There's a comment box down there and it's there for a reason because if you've got a question about the car or you've got a comment you want to make about the car, maybe you own one of these and you want to tell us about your own experience with the Hyundai i10, then stick it in the box down below. Let's create a conversation about these cars and it helps people who are thinking of buying one of these or people who've already got one. There you go. Simple, that's what the comment box is for. There's a subscribe button down there as well give it a subscribe. Why not? Because we don't just do car reviews. As I told you at the beginning, we do a host of other stuff. If you leave the bell sign unchecked, you'll get regular updates on every time we put a video up. Because it's not always about cars, it can be about totally random things all over the place. Because, there's a reason for that, we are part of the Player, Player Magazine. Almost lost my words there. The Player Magazine, or Bookazine as we affectionately call it, is a 220 page lifestyle bookazine. It's packed, jam full of cars, boats, motorcycles, quad bikes, interviews, food, golf, holidays, spas, you name it, it's all in there. You can see it all coming up now. I was flicking through the pages just to give you an idea. It's yours for free because you watch me, AJ, on The Player YouTube channel. All you've got to do is head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. Hang on a minute, let's make it nice and easy for you. Ready? Here it comes. It's coming in there by the magic of edit. It's down there. I'll leave it up for a few seconds. Head over there, name, an email, that's it, that's all you have to put in. I don't need any credit cards, any address details, anything like that, and you will get access to the online version of that publication, 220 pages, fill your boots guys, it's completely free of charge and it comes out every three to four months, full of stuff that, you know, hopefully is of interest like it is to me as well. Been watching me, AJ, on the Player YouTube channel. That was the Hyundai i10. I'll catch you next week with something hopefully as interesting and exciting as this little car. See you then.